Well, welcome to a very wet, very muddy and very windy River Trent. Um, got here at first light, managed to nick this quite quickly, um, which I feel like it's, it's a fortunate bite to be fair, because I only lobbed a single out. Um, but as much as it's uncomfortable for us, I feel like there might be one or two more bites in the day because the river's quite big, there's a lot of water on, but there's been an awful lot of water on for a couple of weeks now. So um, we'll talk through how I'm gonna attack the swim, but that's an epic start, isn't it? Proper fatty, classic Trent fish. Tiny little head, big fat belly, wide shoulders. Probably eight, maybe if me mum weighed it, nine pound. Well, she's well rested, but as I lifted her up and I said she's a big eight, maybe a nine pound if me mum weighed her, I thought, you know, it does actually weigh quite a lot. So I've weighed it and it's bang on 10 pounds. So it's my first double by a Nat's whisker of the year. Very short, very fat, very wide. Woo, very angry. Well, start of the session. Um, this is the swim. It's pretty much a self-explanatory um, floodwater swim, really. We've got a big bank over there that creates a lovely slack area and a crease that's probably 20 yards out. Middle of the river, you'd need 10 or 12 ounces to hold, which clearly isn't feasible. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish a feeder on my upstream rod and probably just a lead and a bag or even a lead and a single hook bait on my downstream rod. I'm gonna fish just into the flow obviously pay out a nice boa line um, but with the feeder rod where this river's been up for probably a week or two now you could you could turn up to this and think that these fish are going to be crawling up the rod tips and actually that would be the case if you was in the first two three four five days maybe of the flood water but in my experience when the water's been up and chocolate for a, for a long time um, the fish do back off the feeder a little bit so i'm not going to go in heavy with the feed i've got a four ounce river feeder <coughs> I'm gonna load it up with ground bait and pellet, nothing special, little bit of goodness in there to make it a bit smellier than normal. And I'm gonna make four chucks with the feeder and on the fifth one, clipped up by the way, so I've got my distance six up here. I'm gonna clip up so that this feeder rod is nice and accurate because if they only open their mouths and feed for 20 minutes today, I don't want 20 feeder loads all over the swim and my hook bait to be in the one that they don't eat on. So for this feeder, I'm going to clip up every single cast, make sure it's landing on a dinner plate. And on the fifth one, I'm going to tie the hook link on and I'm simply going to leave it out there and probably leave it as long as I possibly can. These swims, particularly these, are quite popular. So I don't want to keep bombarding this swim. I want to keep it as quiet as possible. But at the start, right now, I'm just had a bite. There's clearly a fish or two in the area. I'm going to get the disturbance over and done with now because I think conditions are half decent all day. We've got a bit of rain. It's all right, it's a bit cold, um, but it's overcast, the water's coloured, so I feel like there might be a couple of bites on the card. So I'm gonna get the disturbance out of the way early and hopefully reap the rewards later. Hold the handle. My hands have gone so my hands have gone so numb I can't hold the handle of the reel. weather forecast was right the minute it struck 12 o'clock for the very first time <laughs> the rain stopped still windy still pretty cold um, but I've got to say as much as the conditions are uncomfortable but very fishy this morning it feels super fishy right now and it's an awful lot more comfortable 
Um, and you know, a lot of people ask me questions about fishing the River Trent. And if you follow the social media, it might seem like I fish here an awful lot. And I actually don't. What I have tended to do in the last couple of years, however, is sort of save up my time from fishing the smaller rivers down south that are more local to me. They're still a hundred mile round trip. So it's still a couple of hour round trip. And most of the time when I do those, I just do them the sort of last two hours of light and the first two hours into dark. But those southern rivers right now, if you ask an awful lot of people their honest opinion of the condition of the rivers, if you take away those massive fish that they're doing, there's not an awful lot coming through. So what I've tended to do in the last couple of years is save up my short trips to the smaller rivers and probably sacrifice the out and out monsters that are potentially achievable on those. And I come up here for a couple of days every now and again, because as much as I love my fishing and I don't mind sitting there for five, six, seven blanks on the bounce. And again, follow the social media. You think we get bites all the time and it's truly not the case. There's a lot of blanks go into most of the fish that you see on most of people's social media. But for me, because my time is a lot more precious at the moment and I don't get out on the bank anywhere near as much as most people think I do, I would actually rather come up here for a couple of couple of days, get the rods out. And as you've seen today in good conditions, but not certainly not ideal conditions, you only need a couple of bites on a place like this River Trent and it could easily be a couple of doubles. Albeit, I will say this, I've been up here several times before and had five, six, seven bites in a day and not caught a double. So they're not all coconuts, but it's nice to see the smaller fish coming through. So, and I'll tell you another thing, the more I do it, the more I'm actually enjoying the two rods up in the air, more carbling style of fishing, the big leads, the big rods, the heavier lines, um, totally different to the barbel fishing that I always do down south back home. And I still love that and I still will do it, but I do find myself coming up here and spending a little bit more time for the barbel on the River Trent because you just get bites. And as much as I love fishing, I really like the catching part of the fishing. Tyrone, that don't feel bad, mate. <laughs> you hear that? You hear the real ticking? Dude, that ain't even... That feels savagely heavy, man. That's going out to the far side. <laughs> Look how slow that's taking line. That's got to be a big one. Look how slow that's taking line. It don't even know it's hooked. That's mad. Please be a big one because it really feels like it. No head shakes, just a big, heavy, just a big, heavy weight. Pan out such a big bow of line to hold bottom here that I'm not actually getting big fuds or anything. I just literally saw the line just drop back super slack way too quick for a bit of weed or a bit of debris to go through. I just legged it slid off the way down the bank. Um, wound down a few times. And there it is, a big, heavy feeling Trent Barbel. Weather forecast actually said it was going to be stopped rain by now. It must be, it must be wrong. Good job it ain't windy and wet, innit? Dude, it's not even like it's it's loose. Like, I don't want to tighten up anymore. We are at that point where my knees are knocking and I'm starting to talk. Even though I might be I might not be talking to camera, but in my mind I'm going, please stay on, please stay on, please stay on. I'm so nervous right now. Does feel a very good fish, mate. When you're fishing a feeder, I don't think you need to fish too long a hook link, if I'm honest. But it's the because I'm paying out such a big bow of line, I don't know if it made any difference or not, but I put five foot on. Um, and that's the first chuck I've had with five foot. And you can't tell me that fish has literally just turned up. So, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I weren't short initially. I was still sort of three and a half, four foot, but... Small things sometimes make big differences. Hopefully, hopefully this one goes in the back of the net. Ugh. 
It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. She's all right. She's well all right. Hey. <laughs> oh, I really thought it was one of those miserable days that looked great and we blanked, but it ain't. Well, it's not the Leviathan that it felt like when it initially went off, <laughs> but it's an 11 pound four. And I guess it's just been such a long time since I caught barbel in flood conditions like this that I just ain't used to it. But I'll tell you what, I'll never turn my nose up to a double figure barbel, let alone two of them in what is at the moment still a morning. I don't think it's quite 12 o'clock, um, but yeah. What an incredible fish, what an incredible fight. I genuinely thought it felt like 20 pounds. It was amazing. Do you know, it's days like today when I realize that people that don't fish, they've got a point. What the hell are we doing? <laughs> it's miserable. And then, and then the rod goes over and this goes off. Your knees start to knock. Of course, it's got a big head on it water is very cold your knees start to knock and I and it doesn't matter all of a sudden it doesn't matter Flood water barbel fishing. Avoid the logs. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> the bream. <laughs> Bless it. Actually hanging on. Oi. There you go. Well, yeah, it's a brave. <laughs> well, the bream have turned up, and I don't mind because it means that something's feeding. Because as good as it looks, the barbel really haven't been on it, and if I'm honest. My experience on the Trent is when you're getting pestered by the bream, and I know this is only number two, but when you're getting pestered by the bream, inevitably it's only a matter of time before it rips off with a proper one. Yeah, there's a fish roll. Right where, you just here. Right where, it probably was a bream, yeah. Come here, here you come. That's, that's actually quite a big bream. Well, it's the witching hour, it's bite time. And actually, if I'm honest, I did expect after having a quick bite this morning to have had more bites up till now. Um, but I think the rain that's just gone in over the last couple of days is just probably taking the water temperature. I don't take temperatures by the way, guys, because <laughs> when I go fishing, I just go fishing. Um, but I do feel like the water temperature has come down a few degrees to the point where it's just made it's more scratching time than than I expected. But um, I'm going to have one more chuck 
I do expect to have a bite, but it hasn't happened in the last couple of hours. If it doesn't, I'll see you in the next one. But if it does, you'll see me in about two seconds time. Well, there you go. Tyrone's literally just gone. Sun's gone down. It's a bit moody. It's freezing cold. But that will top off a difficult, but it's still very nice day on the trend. Probably, wee, probably eight pound, the genuine eight pound, not like the first one. Lovely. And like buses, as they say, this one, however, came on the downstream rod, just a single look bait on the same line. It's about, I don't know, it's a baby to be fair for the trend. There you. Well rested. There we go. Five or six pound maybe. Go that way. That's the one. Ta-ta. Getting smaller though. I need to get bigger. <laughs> <laughs>